Good morning. This is Brian with Forest Hills Memorials. It's a Monday. It's the 15th of April. And it's going to be beautiful out today. First day of shorts for the season. Um, it's been that kind of a year where we're getting a lot of things early. And the weather's been awesome. So I haven't filmed since... So the last videos you've been seeing have been, you know, about down in Georgia and down in Alberton. And the week I got back, we had snow and a ton of rain here. So I didn't film a whole lot during that, actually none during that week, obviously. Last week, um, I wish I had it on video. I can probably see from the back here outside. So I had a stone that I was, so that stone right there, um, it's a, it's a decent sized die and it's got some little, you know, decent amount of weight to it. I think it's 18 or 1900 pounds and I was lifting it with a truck and the first time in my career, uh, I had it, you know, up going over the crane support that's on the flatbed of the truck and the cable snapped. So came crashing down. Luckily it was still crated. Uh, there is damage to it. Um, so it broke the cable. When it came down, it actually sliced my straps, which were my only six footers, which I need for that one because it's a taller piece. So um, I've got a new cable on order. I've got new straps on order. Nothing's come in yet. So um, I'm hoping this week that we <clears throat> get some of that uh, stuff in that I ordered. That was, uh, you know, that one set me back for a little bit. The rest of the day, I don't remember, it was early last week, uh, the little rattling when something like that falls from that height, and just thank God I wasn't underneath it. That would have uh, that would have been the end of this channel, let's just say that. <laughs> um, I was at probably at least 15 feet away, so whenever I'm, I try to be very mindful when I'm lifting anything, but especially something that heavy. Uh, anything can happen and you know I broke in a weird spot the cable the cable did break but it broke at a connector so I can show you sometime today where it actually broke uh, in a very weird spot the cable had no frays no kinks in the entire length of the cable and it broke right at a connector where you know it, obviously inside the connector you can't see the cable at all so there's no way to tell you know if it was going to break or if it was worn or, or anything so uh, yeah that was a that was a doozy um, it, it broke you know the side rail of my truck and uh, so I, some of last week I was putting wood project together and getting um, some of that repaired yeah somebody parked outside my lot here uh, so I wanted to video today one of the cool pieces we're gonna be doing don't mind the garbage but I have that boulder right there so um, I took the I took the cable off of our Chevy it has the same auto crane so I took that cable and put it on the Dodge um, and then my forefoot straps are big enough for everything that I'm moving around so that boulder has a pretty cool story a farmer uh, in the area found that in one of his fields and he happened to uh, used to have worked in a rock quarry so he's familiar with the equipment uh, familiar with working with rock obviously I don't know what kind of quarry it was but he ended up building his own wire saw in one of his barns on, on his farm and he cut the bottom completely flat and he cut the side you know completely flat it's almost it's got like a semi polish to it um, so it it was very very flat we don't generally engrave boulders but this thing was so flat it was not too bad so the guys weren't super happy with me when I told them we took this one on I think when they saw it they saw us they saw what I was talking about so want to get, uh, get that one set today and then I've got a bench and a slant to set today. Um, I've got to stop by my parents' house and grab one of my chainsaws that I leave down in the barn. Um, one of the guys at a local cemetery wants to borrow that. Uh, so 
We'll get that dropped off at the cemetery. Do we have an update in here? Um, our bronze foundry ended up getting us some bronze samples for our bronze wall. Um, so that's nice. I've, I've wanted one of these companion bronze for a long time. So getting that and this one, so they, they sent three of these over. It's got a wood kind of backdrop to it, but it's colored like the granite would be. So I've been wanting to do that for quite a while, finish off that bronze wall and we finally got her done. So that is going to be what today looks like. So wait for the boss to come in. I'm just getting ready to go start the truck and start getting some of this stuff loaded up. So we'll see you on the road. So we made it here to Flora Cemetery and I just got off the phone with my pops because he knows a whole lot more about a lot of things than I do. I was talking to him about the cable, even this cable. So cables got me a little worried even on this new one. So. Uh, it's not a new one. I bought the cable for this crane at the same time as I bought the cable for this crane that broke. And so this cable came off our Chevy, like I said. And you know, it had, it had probably honestly lifted up maybe a dozen stones uh, before I put it on this truck. Uh, so the other cable actually broke off right here, right where this kind of Y connection, the right where it connects there is where that one broke. So there's no real way to tell, you know, to go through and inspect the cable. I mean, you can tell this thing's virtually brand new, uh, but it's starting to... So my dad worked at a plant here locally that manufactured vehicles and they had gigantic cranes much bigger than this so he has some experience in those and he said this was something like like bird nesting where the smaller strains I don't know how well you can see that but there's like larger wire on the outside and then they, they get the diameter of them gets smaller it looks like in the inside of this uh, braided wire and they're coming out so he was calling it something like bird nesting but it's got me worried and it's got me wondering you know if i just got a bad batch of cable i mean if you look at this it's you know essentially new there's like zero rust zero crimping zero fraying but it's having an issue roughly you know within a couple inches of the same spot the other one did so I do believe this is a sign that I should not be using this cable. Um, so tomorrow it's supposed to, we're supposed to have some pretty big storms. I'm gonna try to get these installed today. Even with this the way it is, I will not be even close to standing underneath it just cause it's got me worried, especially after that happening. Um, I'm gonna set, so I, this foundation I did in the fall and this Lee stone goes on it. I gotta see which, I had to see which uh, direction the stone faces. So I'm gonna lift it up. I'm gonna have everything set down here and I'm gonna not be anywhere near the stone. And you know, when it gets, when it gets a foot off the ground, I'll come over and make sure it sets down proper. So I want to get my setting sticks 
roughly in place for it to set on and I'm going to do what I can to not extend the boom out very far. I think I'll probably be able to just have the boom where it's at. I generally like to have the boom extended out a little ways just so then when I go up with the winch it can clear everything. I do need to grab the sling. This GoPro is starting to drive me crazy. It keeps turning off. All right, so we're clearing the truck. And then we're going to lower it down without being right on top of it but I can't have it spinning like that the problem with having a cable that you can't trust is that you've got to be here to semi get the memorial down straight you know <laughs> so this thing is such a weird shape i think i'm going to bring it to the front a little bit more i'm going to bring it towards me a little bit more hard to get any measurements off it but I mean I don't think that looks too bad as far as left to right yeah and front to back it looks pretty good The back of this stone is where the it's very unique. I'll take the headset off and do a. This one's cool too. So this is the edge of a block. So when the Alberton guy was talking about, they had pneumatic drills that would go, or I guess uh, hydraulic drills that would go down to cut the cut the big blocks out of the quarry. You know, instead of cutting this off, they incorporated that into the stone, which is pretty cool you know <laughs> if you were out here in the cemetery and didn't know what it was you might think it looked weird but just knowing that process and seeing it and seeing it out here is pretty neat so yeah look at the look at the back of that that's uh that's the uniqueness to this piece And again, the guy cut this himself. And I had to have a talk with him because 
you can see these cracks in the stone this is not monumental grade uh, we wouldn't use something like this because eventually water is going to get in there and that's going to probably going to crack off so let them know that stuff wasn't even sure how it was going to sandblast you can tell it did a little bit in here but not not enough to not do it so all right so we are all done with this one so this was our heavy one for today <laughs> every boulder is a little bit different i don't know if you saw on the time lapse i had a little bit of an issue getting my setting stick out from this side and just the you know the weight's different on this whole side so i had to move my pry bar around even just like an eighth of an inch trying to figure out where the stone was going to pick up level so that it didn't have a little bit of weight on my setting stick you know i picked it up over here and there was you know leaning this way picked it up over here leaning that way and it was still pinching the stick and you can tell you know underneath the stone there there's it's all you know cut out over here so it wasn't easy to find a spot either that would uh you know take the weight so that's this one we're all set now i'm gonna head over to my parents pick up some tools for one of the cemetery guys locally and drop those off at my next cemetery i'm going to so that'll be i'm not gonna film my dad and i can talk for three hours so i'm not gonna film that but you'll see me at the next cemetery maybe on the way there so i just wanted to hop on just went by a cemetery on this road that has a lot of i don't know what you call it for lore folklore i'm on a road it's called bloods point road and there's a cemetery on this road that its name is bloods point cemetery and i've always heard a lot of stories about it being very haunted uh, so apparently a lot of people go there with their whatever their detectors are to, to see if there's haunted things in the cemetery I don't remember the uh, the entire story of what goes on there I'll, maybe I'll look that up it'll be an interesting read but Bloods Point Cemetery and the ghostly encounters that take place there uh, maybe I'll look into that and see what it is but just drove by there and I thought of that it reminded me of all the stuff I've heard about it so I've never done a memorial in that cemetery so um, it would be interesting when I do, I'm sure I will. Uh, as far as I know, it's still a cemetery that, um, you know, is still having burials. So, uh, just a neat little side note there. I'm on a curve here, so I don't want to let go of the steering wheel, but we will find the way to pick up my saw. So, I will uh, see y'all in a little bit. All right, so just getting here to Winnebago Cemetery where I'm going to set Dunbar. Goes right next to this Dunbar one. And again, um, I'm gonna be setting this one on some of these plastic setting sticks because I'm not happy with it, so we're gonna be replacing it. I will verify obviously let the family know that I just want them to have something out here you know they've waited a long time for it to be done so I want them to have something to come and visit to still got me a little worried you stand back until this stone is darn near on the ground so I think what what I talked to my dad about a couple of things to do to kind of get around that area and so I think I'm going to stop at the hardware store after I'm done today and pick up some things to make it a little better and make it a lot better yep I can't get those out so we'll put our normal setting cushions or setting sticks under and 
take the plastics out real quick. Put these in. Go back down. I am going to get a measurement. Make sure I'm pretty close before I drop all the weight. Six. Should be on sevens, front and back. Yep, so that's good. So, folks that are in the industry understand what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about why I'm replacing this stone. So there's different ways of sandblasting. You can single process the sandblast or you can double process the sandblast. So uh, during a single process of sandblasting with the entire stencil over this panel, they will, using sand, blast the letters and numbers deep with the stencil covering this. And then it'll go into another a paint booth where the paint is applied in those deep cut areas and then they'll go into another sandblast booth where generally we're using a pinter ball a little steel shot bb we'll pull the stencil and then blast the panel on and if you use too high of a pressure when you're blasting the panel it'll round your letters and that's what we have here this looks real bad I don't care for the shape carving. That's another big reason. Uh, with a double process, you would actually sandblast the panel on first. So you would peel all of this stencil off. You'd, you'd sandblast the, the panel, and then you'd put the stencil back on. And then after you got that re-glued down, you would then peel these letters, and you would deep cut the letters and numbers with the panel already there. And so it leaves your nice, crisp, corners and edges um, and then you would then paint it then and then you would get that that contrasting color so in my opinion the guys just had the pinter ball booth that put this panel on that they had the pressure up too high normally I'm gonna run it like an 8 psi to put this panel on I think they had it I don't know higher than that because it rounded the letters if you use a low pressure it won't do that it doesn't even mess with the paint um, so I don't mind doing a single process I know it saves time in that but if the end product doesn't look good it doesn't make sense if the end product doesn't look good then don't even give it to me and say you're done with it because I'm not gonna okay it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down on these cushions so it'll look like it's installed and set just like I normally would. Um, maybe a little bit higher. I think these are quarter inch cushions. Uh, but it'll look better than me leaving it on sticks. And then when I come back to replace the stone, I'll still be able to lift it up and get my straps back under. So I'm not using any setting compound since I've got to remove it. We'll set it down gently, right down on here. So when you're setting the stone down, typically you've got that joint tight or setting compound under the stone. It acts as a cushion when you lower it onto that. I don't have that in this case, so just be extra gentle getting the stone down. Normally I rip these out, I'm not gonna do that today. So, you know, it's up a little bit definitely way better than having an inch thick stick under there so now what I am gonna do they bought vases as well so I'm gonna go ahead I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this truck out of here and then I'll put their vases on All right, all right, got vases, stones here for them. 
I mean, they might come out here and, and love the stone, but you know, they still owe money on this marker. Um, they're not going to be getting an invoice for it until it's perfect. So if they like it and want to keep it, I'll have to put that VA medallion on, but then it puts me in a tough spot because obviously they're buying the stone, but it's coming from me and I want to know that it is perfect. So it's a tough one. So, all right. I'm gonna load everything up and then we're on to the next cemetery. Uh, I was talking to my mom and dad about this next cemetery I'm going to. It's called Mouth of Stillman Cemetery. And it's one of those cemeteries that if you didn't know it was there, you would never know it's there. It's a very small cemetery that you can't see from the road. So we'll uh, get all that dropped off and then head that way. So I wanted to video getting into the cemetery because this is the one where, you know, it says Mouth of Stoneman Cemetery, but you can't even see it, you know, it's like, it looks like it's somebody's property here, uh, <clears throat> right next to the railroad tracks there, and you gotta come, it's, it's a pain to come in here with our trailer, that's for sure, there's nowhere to really turn around. So we grow up, you know, five or ten miles from here, and I was talking to my dad about this cemetery. He had never heard of it. I never heard of it until, you know, ten years ago when I started doing stones all over the place. But we've probably done a dozen in here, I'd say. So, just wanted to show you the entrance, one of the cooler entrances of, uh, you know, kindly hidden uh, little cemetery here. All right, so <clears throat> this marker goes down the hill here. I'm basically in this tree, uh, but it sure is nice. You know, we went out and did all these foundations last fall. It sure makes them go quicker in the spring when the stones are ready. Um, we do that in case the memorial is completed in the winter and then I can still come out here and install them. In the winter the ground's frozen so you can't dig them in uh, but man you know being able to come out here and just set up for installs awfully nice so I'm gonna set up another time warp on here for you let's see if we're in there for a little time lapse That's not what I want. So this, it irritates me to even think like this, but this stone is completely perfect. So we are going to set it as we normally would complete. Hopefully not knock too much of this tree apart. My boom's gonna definitely be in the tree. It's tough because I'm gonna wipe this off and then the boom's gonna knock a bunch of stuff on here again. But we'll get it good.
we're gonna make sure our straps are good. You always wanna have a little bit of an overhang just so it has a spot to clamp on. Gonna lift up, gonna boom up as close as we can. Bring her over. So this is the bottom part, obviously, of the pedestal bench. I like these benches because they offer more stability. So there is a bench, it's a straight leg bench that like the entire middle area is gone and it's just got straight legs. Uh, we do pin those together but I just don't feel like they're super secure. I feel so like they're should be good. more prone to tipping. Uh, oh, so we don't, we'll don't. still offer that to you if that's what you want but we'll try to We'll be putting, talk you into this. Some pennies the under this one. isn't really a whole lot different for our spacers. Um, we'll joint and tight do have it down. To offset this. So we need to offset this to the right. So they have, this family has one vase that's going with this bench. And it's gonna go on Timothy's side. So I wanna keep the stone about three inches from the edge. That's where the seat will hang over. Put it down here and then take some measurements. It's of the polished look. So we need to get our front back and side measurements, make sure we're square, get all this stuff out of the way. We got eight in the back, eight and a half in the front, so just a quarter, quarter inch. Eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter. So three and a quarter, that's gonna be good. So bench here, vase on his side. I wanna offset it because otherwise when you put flowers in the vase, they'll be hitting the bench seat. Been watching a lot of uh, restoration videos on YouTube lately. It's not like old marble stone restoration videos. Just getting some ideas. Uh, Beth thinks it's more of an obsession, but I like watching that stuff. But they use a uh, tuck pointer for cleaning up all the joint height around when they're resetting stones. I thought that was a cool idea. Just able to create a little bit of a better line than a putty knife, and it's just more of a versatile tool. So I picked one up last time I was at Lowe's. joint tight, get our, there's an older penny, what do they call those, a wheat penny, the one cent on the back from 1947, save that one, alright, those in, so this has a granite foundation. Which I do prefer over the concrete ones. I was watching a YouTube video about the, it said it was the oldest granite quarry in America, the Berry Gray granite quarry that uh, Rock of Ages owns in Barry, Vermont. And uh, the guy was giving a little bit of a history talk about the granite and he had mentioned that that granite was, I always tell people, you know, this granite's been around for 30 million years. Uh, it's probably gonna last a little while. And the concrete ones, you know, maybe a hundred years. And the guy 
from Rock of Ages stated that the granite deposit in Vermont there was formed, I was a little off, he said it was formed 380 million years ago. <laughs> so a little older than 30 million years ago, so 380 million years ago that Earth's molten magna rose up through the cracks of the earth and form the so we'll put these strips of joint tight in here get our oak sticks so again on an all polished surface like this the stone's not very heavy but if you're like if I was going to use that metal pry bar like I just did on that boulder and put it up against this polished surface there's a good chance you're going to pop that polish where wood gives a little bit and you're gonna have much less of a possibility of a chipping. So I always use these oak sticks. at this time below this tree so I don't grab as much tree limb. Bring her over. I need to get pretty close. So that joint tight is going to take a while till it squish down onto those pennies that we put down so we'll have plenty of time to move that bench seat around until it's perfect. I feel pretty good about having that bench offset. Sometimes I worry, you know, when you get closer to the edge of the foundation, uh, it's where mowers and that generally turn around. And I get worried about them getting hit by a mower, but in this case, a mower is not gonna fit there. So they're gonna have to trim in between those. So it should be fine. I think that's a lot of stuff people don't generally think about. I definitely want to go that way to see. Uh, but working in a cemetery for so long, I like to look at that stuff just so that we don't have to worry about damage in the future. Just about right there. So that's why I wanted to offset this. So the flowers have somewhere to go. Otherwise, if they're under the bench, they can only you know, have like a four inch tall flower. Ouch, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to put this joint tight back. I will grab my cleaning supplies. We'll uh, clean off the bench and then that one will be done. I think at the end of the day here on my way back to the office, I'm going to stop at the hardware store, get some pieces to redo my cable right there. So that is going to be it for today. Thanks for uh, thanks for tagging along and uh, coming out with me today and getting this uh, couple of these installed. And let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about any of that engraving stuff, or if you know something different, feel free to let me know. It's uh, just stuff I've been told and learned over the years. So. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for hitting that like button. And we'll see you on the next one.